I know. I, I, a lot of the things that, uh, I try to do a lot of things that you did, your attention to detail, how you see the whole room, yeah. you know, saying yes to people, all those things I, I've tried to live my, my career by. All right, good. So no wonder you're so successful. So see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm in our newest restaurant. This will be our newest restaurant. It's not open yet. Yeah. Uh, the Denver Art Museum. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, so it's going to open in uh, next October. So okay, good. good. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So when's the last time you two saw each other? Oh, I feel like it was at a special event somewhere, but I yeah, don't. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but it was in yesterday. Florida or huh? And maybe in Florida or where was it? A special event somewhere. Yeah. Or in Los Angeles or. Oh. Yeah, some big special event, but yeah. And if Wolfgang came out to the restaurant a long time ago, I'd love him to to see the new ones again. That'd be fun yeah. if you ever come to Denver. Yeah. I'd love for well, you to see. You know, we, before we had the restaurant up in Pachla Gold, so that was easier. You know, yeah. I used to go through Denver all the time, and uh, now I fly over it, so. I know. Too much to do. Yeah. Too much well, to do. I, I just want you two to keep talking and basically <laughs> yeah, to, gonna... to interview each other. And uh, our, our topic for today in theory is about, or in practice, is about innovation something that both of you are experts at. I mean, Wolfgang Puck, you invented a new style of pizza and a new style of Chinese food and a whole bunch of other things. And uh, Jennifer, you've helped transform the Denver dining scene and brought sort of a, a Southern California ethos to to the cuisine of the city. Uh, but nobody wants to hear what I think. I would just like you to to talk to each other about what you've been doing, what you've been working on, and uh, and how you guys have, have fared during the pandemic. All right, well, I think I'm gonna ask Jennifer, so what exactly are you doing? I know I can see you have a brand new restaurant at the museum coming up. We did a few restaurants at museums uh -huh. in Chicago and so forth. So what are, exactly, where are you in Denver? Tell me a little bit about you. Okay, well, um, I'm sitting in the Ponte, which is our newest restaurant. It'll open up October 20th or 24th, somewhere around there, and keeping crazy busy. Um, we have five restaurants in our group. We would have had one, but we lost it in the pandemic. We lost one of them, but um, that kind of was hard. Um, but, you know, working on creating a really beautiful brand that is based out of Denver, but does kind of have that feel that you taught me all those years of the most beautiful ingredients and uh, how to take care of things. And um, I'm just super lucky that people have been receptive to me here over the last 21 years. Do you believe I've been here 21 years? Oh my God, you look like you are 31. <laughs> exactly. I got the lotion, you know, I got to stay yeah. fresh. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm still working hard, training good people. And I still love the work, Wolf. You know, I still love being in the kitchen and creating food. And yeah. um, so that's great. Um, but, you know, uh, I don't know. I, it's crazy. How about you? You're going all over the whole world now, international. Yeah, no, no, totally. You know, we expanded internationally. We also lost a few restaurants in Detroit and in Atlantic City, which was okay. You know, sometimes you make deals. They are not the best deals and they go away. And then you get a better deal. Like I made a better deal with the MGM for Las Vegas. So that's good. Yeah. And we still have all the restaurants. You know, we moved Spago to the Bellagio, which gave us a whole new life. Wow. We doubled the business. You know, Spago and Caesar's Palace started to go down. And, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't the same customers. And, uh, you know, now Spago at, um, at the Bellagio, we have the best location there with the patio overlooking the fountains and everything. So it's doing amazing. Yeah. They, is running all the restaurants there. He's a very good manager. He's good. not as good a chef as you are, but he's a very good manager, you know, and he Aww. keeps everybody in line. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we started to, 10 years ago, we started to um, really get opportunities overseas. So we started to expand overseas. So it started first in Singapore with the same people as in Las Vegas, Marina Bay Sands, you know, the Venetian group. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we signed a deal with the Dorchester in London, which is 10 years wow. we are open now. So, and then we continued in the Middle East, in Dubai, in Qatar, in uh, Bahrain. 
Now Saudi Arabia is coming up with two locations in uh, one in, Ria, in Riyadh, two restaurants in Riyadh, one in uh, Jeddah. So we just continue moving forward, and we just opened in June Budapest. Wow. Crazy, so, and I can't believe it. And and so all the family is still there, right? Lee and the whole everybody. So Lee is gone there. since about six months. Oh, six months. Okay, he, wow. Uh, he, I don't know what he wants. He didn't know what he wanted, you know. And uh, I think it's good for all of us, actually, for him and for us. Mm -hmm. So now people are moving up. Like I have, I don't know if you know Tetsu. Uh huh. Yeah, Tetsu. Absolutely. Yeah, Tetsu is really talented, and he's really great to work. You know, he just came back from. Budapest and he's going to uh, Istanbul next. So he's really looking after all the places, working with the chefs, and he has a very good rapport with everybody. So I'm very happy. And what is great with that, so he actually does the work. And whereas Lee at the end, he just said, okay, I'm going to tell Ari, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, said, yeah, I can tell Ari myself, you know. Change, change oh. is hard, but change is good, you know, to stay yeah, relevant, no. to give people opportunity. I've lost a few people that were with me 16, 17 years, not in a bad way, but and then moving the people up has been a good thing, a good know. educational thing. And even the pandemic, even though how hard it was, we learned a lot of lessons about our business and how to be more efficient and more effective. Mm -hmm. And it kicked me in the ass, and I think I needed a kick in the ass. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it got me... Uh, to focus on some of the things maybe I was letting go too easily, you know. Um, yeah. So it was a kick in the ass, but uh, I've learned a lot of lessons, hard ones and good ones. And, yeah, you know, no, I think everybody learned how to, not everybody, but I think we learned how to operate better, yeah. more efficiently. And sometimes, you know, with the excess part, you said we can live without that. And I think it's really. Uh, in a way, good thing. Like I had Tracy with me also for 20 years or so. So she left like over a year ago. I gave her a good, you know, goodbye and paid her for nine months after she left. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she thought it's going to be easy to get another job somewhere. So now she's in Bentonville, Arkansas. But w at the end of the day, she did not contribute what she should have done. You know, and I love her. We talk often still, but you know, as a business, I separate the, the life. If I like somebody and the business, you know, the business part, she was not efficient. Yes. And complacency, it's hard, especially yeah. people who get so comfortable after yeah. so many years. And I, what I do love about you is how loyal you are. And yeah. I'm the same way. But at some point, if the business is suffering, you have to make hard decisions yeah. very hard because you love these people. But yeah, no, I think so too, complacency sets in after a while instead of having consistent improvement, you know, uh, continuing improving the place, you know, and I'm always for it, like uh, everything, I, every day I think, how can I do this better? Yeah. And I'm just talking, I just talked before with uh, Michel Bernardo, I said, I want a plate for my Wiener Schnitzel, you know, that comes from where I grew up. I yeah. said, I want to design, uh, so I designed a special plate, so now he's fabricating it. And uh, now we're going to have a special Wiener Schnitzel plate. So I'm going to export it to Austria so they can do it too. That's awesome. Yeah. I made my husband schnitzel uh, for the first time after a long time. And he's like, why have you never made schnitzel for me before? And I'm like, no, this is exactly how you make it. Wolfgang taught me exactly yeah. like this. Don't try to put all this other stuff in it. Doesn't go there. And, yeah. But he loved it. But uh, it's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome though. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, many so things. I'm leaving now. I'm leaving on Sunday for Europe again. So my nephew, Simi, is getting married. You know, my sister, Maria's yes. boys. Oh, my gosh. And he's getting married. So I'm going to go there to Austria for a week and then to Budapest, check on the restaurant a little bit, maybe promote the hotel. The hotel is the occupancy is very low, but our restaurant is packed. The prime minister, all these people come, all the big people in Budapest come to our restaurant. So it's good. And then our partner's daughter in Istanbul is getting married a week later. So we're going to go to Istanbul to the wedding, check the restaurant and come back home. I've always wanted to go to Istanbul. It's, oh, it's an amazing city. An yes. amazing city. Yeah, really. I love it. You know, it's so big. It's 18 million people. People don't wow. know how big it is. You go to the airport, there's probably the biggest airport anywhere. I don't really? think they have. Uh, when you walk to the gates or you walk somewhere, you need a car, if not, it's yeah. <laughs> half an hour.
All right. Yeah, they will really build it for the future, you know, and that's beautiful done, but uh, so big. But the city is really interesting and what is great, the Turks love to go out. Yeah, they like to go out and eat and yeah. enjoy food and all that good stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, they love to party. They love to drink. They smoke a lot. Nobody cares over there about the COVID, <laughs> you know. Okay, okay, okay. Well, they're having fun. That's good. Yeah. And how about Byron and Cameron? Are they just... So Cameron crazy? just got his speech. Cameron just got his PhD. PhD? Yeah, oh. so he's going to be a professor, but he married very smart, just like your husband probably did. <laughs> so his wife works for McKenzie Consulting and makes really good money. So they bought a house in Boston and, you know, they live okay. Good. And then Byron went to Cornell and he's working with me. He's running our newest restaurant. We open up at the Bandry Hotel, two restaurants, one an Asian one and one more Mediterranean, and we do all this food service, room service and everything. That's awesome. Uh, I remember so, you guys making pizzas at Eureka with the kids come yeah. by and we'd make oh, pizzas with them all the time. I do remember yeah. it. I uh, know. So now he's running the restaurant. He's doing a great job. And, you know, I sent him to cook, too. He worked with Guy Savoy in Paris. He worked with the Roca Brothers in Spain and with Eric Ripper and with Grand Dachat. So, but now he's managing. He worked one year at Spargo in the front, on the front. Okay. In the front of the house, and now he is managing this one up there, but he misses the cooking, so it's interesting to see. Maybe it's in the That's DNA. That's and awesome. I have yeah. my youngest one who is 14. He, uh, we were together in Europe on vacation, but now mm -hmm. before that, and even now still, before they go back to school, they go to school in Switzerland. Okay. Boarding school, and then they're working in the front of the house too. And That's this awesome. little one seems to like it. Okay, good. Well, it seems like life is pretty good. That's wonderful. You, you know. deserve it after you work your ass off your whole life. Let me just tell you. I yeah. tell people stories all the time about you'd always make a joke like 12 hours is only a half day, you know, and yeah. like we always make that. I make that joke still to my cooks too. But you would, you know, when I was 22 or 30, you would work harder than me, I feel like. And I had to, I'm like, no, I'm going to work harder than him. I'm going to make sure I work harder than you. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I tell everybody when they talk about you, I tell everybody, you know, Jennifer worked harder than any guys, you know, in the kitchen. You always think, oh, women cannot work as hard as a guy, but you supplanted them all and did more and worked harder, and you're talented. So I think you had a good mixture. And now you found a husband. How long are you married already? We're going to have our 10 year anniversary in a couple weeks. Oh, fantastic. So not too long, yeah. But uh, but he's fantastic. He's a chef as well. He oh, has yeah. his own restaurant group here in Denver as well. Oh, um, he has seven restaurants in his group. Oh my! So you're controlling them by hundred percent. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> we're working on it. Yeah, There's no no, on. no space for anybody else left there. Oh, plenty for you though. Anytime. No. <laughs> you know, and um, I don't think Pat Miller is still alive there. No. She is. Uh, her husband passed away uh, a few years back, but Pat is still has wow. a show and she's act doing okay and um, mark passed away a couple years back yeah. and that was hard but she's tough she's tough yeah, yeah. she's a tough bro too yeah, yeah. No. yeah. well if you talk to her tell her about says hello okay i will i'll send her a note today she'll love it yeah yeah so so you guys are adorable but i have a couple of uh, follow up questions because I'm a journalist and I wanted you to talk a little bit more about some of the efficiencies that you you learned to do during the pandemic, which Wolfgang, you, you talked, you hinted at the idea that, you know, you learned to let go of certain things and I'd love you both to elaborate on that a little bit. Well, I can start. I know that, you know, when we shut down our five restaurants, we furloughed almost everybody except for a very few people. Uh, you know, obviously the owners, we all stayed on uh, and just worked. Um, but then we started, as we started to think about, you know, what was going to happen, we just made a bunch of hard decisions on, did we really need this? Did we really need that? Do I really need that person? Do I really need, you know, this such a business model? Should I streamline my menu to become more efficient? Should I streamline the bar program? Should we lower our inventories? Um, should I make sure there's more cross utilization of ingredients on the menus? Um, we really went through the so gamut of that, and, and now we can't even hire people. We have to keep that streamline up or else the few less people we have can't do it. So we're trying to, you know, as an example at Rioja, we had a five-person station. 
in the kitchen. We're now running with a four person station. We're not going to go back to five stations. We're going to have the four people be more efficient. Um, so that type of model um, are things. And also just maybe too many people like picking at you, you know, um, from the outside. Just no, we can't do that. You know, um, we got in survival mode and um, we're going to try to stay, stay not just in survival mode. I want to be in growth mode, but we let too many things kind of pick at us and pick us away at what our goal was of great food and great hospitality. What, what can you uh, give some examples of what, what kind of picking you're talking about? Is this the well, need for different associations? Maybe, maybe it's like, you know, the downtown Denver partnership wanted this and this person wanted this and another group wanted this. And do we have to have a copier service for this? Can we do this in house? Do we have to have, you know, there's, cleaning crew to do this or should we do it in house or you know there's some things that make sense and sometimes you're like no we can figure out this work and have a more efficient profitable way to do it those are perfect. what about you wolf what, do, what what are the things that you well i think you know because we have places you know all over really you know we are not concentrated in one city though las vegas and la are still our main cities with five or six restaurants in each town but, you know, we really changed the way we operated even before the pandemic. I said, I want to hold every chef and every manager responsible. So that way we don't need the corporate overhead, you know, because we have 27 restaurants. We have uh, 80 restaurants in the airports and everything. So we keep it really lean on a corporate level. But in the restaurants, they got so busy. I mean, you went at the, you remember the bar and grill in Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The best months we ever had since we opened in 93 or 94 was in July. I mean, the restaurant is like $1.8 million in one month. I mean, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. So, and Maui is off the charts. Yeah. We have the best month, the best year ever in Maui. Las Vegas, I think in all of our restaurants, we're probably going to do better where we were open, you know, in some of the locations like Spago at the Bellagio, they told us we cannot open, uh, you know, seven days or whatever. We cannot open for lunch, but some of the restaurants are really doing well, but I don't have this corporate overhead anymore, which saved us like $2 million a year, Yeah. you know, and what do they actually bring to the pie? You know, if somebody is really good, you know, I'm willing to pay really well, but if uh, people just travel around and, you know, want to take the vacations at the same time, then it's difficult. Yeah. yeah. Now, we have a restaurant here. I had a restaurant here. I'm here in my office here in the Pacific Design Center. We had a restaurant here called Rogue for like two years, and uh, it was just really for, you know, innovation. So we made a 16 course uh, uh, menu and uh, we changed the menu, the whole menu every two weeks. At the beginning, every week that was too much, but every two weeks. Yeah. And uh, it was great to see who can actually innovate, who can think more and about that. I loved it really. We lost, it costed us a lot of money, but I think if we want to move forward and we, have a good amount of tradition and innovation we stay in business for a long time you know Spago is open 40 years now and it's still as busy as it ever was if not better why because we keep the tradition and the innovation but what i changed mainly is our infrastructure our corporate overhead so i keep that to a minimum and when you look Klaus, Klaus, my brother runs all of our restaurants in the airports and everything we don't really have many other uh, cafes left uh, so he is also very lean i said you know but you get you know how to make a pizza if somewhere a pizza is not good and you see it you show them how to make it you know so i think that's really good and everybody seems happier because there's no fat nobody's standing around and saying maybe i don't gonna have a job tomorrow you know now everybody has one and the pandemic really helped because when we were closed so we could hire the best people back, the people we really wanted, like in the dining home or even in the kitchen, you know, and, and now it has become so busy that it's really difficult just to find people. Mm -hmm. Like at the Bel Air Hotel, they have to tell people, no, sorry, we are sold out. Even they have empty tables because we don't have enough waiters. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're doing that too. We're, we're literally blocking a third of the tables just not to have reservations on them because we can't handle it, yeah. you know, because we don't have service staff on. But I love your point about tradition and innovation because I think that's really key to growth because keeping the things that some things that people really love and know us for are great, but also constantly innovating because yeah. if not, if we stay stagnant, we're never going to be successful in this world. So relevancy is my big thing. How do I stay relevant to my guests, to everything, to the restaurant world? And it's hard to ask yourself, you know, I opened this restaurant, like you said, uh, my Rioja is 17 years old now. And I asked myself the question, would I do the same thing today that I did 17 years ago? A lot of times I say, no, I wouldn't. And so we have to change, you know, and if we don't change, I'll get left behind. And I don't want to get left behind. Totally, totally. You have to have, you know, like I always remember one customer at Chinois, uh, uh, we were making this tempura sashimi there, you know, we we're making it since the beginning because I had these Japanese chefs there too. And one day I changed the sauce. I said, you know, I'm tired of making this rich sea urchin sauce. I changed the sauce, a customer comes, a regular from Newport Beach drives up to Shino to have dinner. Mm -hmm. And then he orders, he always orders the tempura sashimi. And I changed the sauce. He calls me over and says, what did you do to my dish? I said, what, what your dish? He said, the tempura sashimi with the sea urchin sauce. And I said, well, I changed it. I got tired of the sauce and I want to make it a little lighter. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and says, you know, if I don't get tired of eating it, you shouldn't be tired of cooking it. <laughs> so I said, you have, you have a point. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some things, yeah. Yeah, we have my artichoke torloni is still on the menu, been on the menu for all 17 years, and it's not going off. And, and I still love eating it to this day, yeah. even me, which is yeah. fun. So, yeah, I think a good mix of that tradition and innovation is, is where to be. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I've taken up a lot of your time, but I have just one more question that uh, because you both uh, spoke about uh, how important it is to stay motivated and not to rest on your laurels and relax on your success. What are there are there techniques you have to to stay motivated? And if so, what are they? You know, for me, I don't know if I have any techniques. I think I'm just a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever satisfied with where we're at in our restaurants. I always think we can do better. Um, so I think that's either a flaw in me or a good quality in me, depending on who looks at it one way or the other. Um, I'm just always thinking that we can do something better and that we could find a better ingredient or maybe a you know, better dish or learn something new or, I don't know. I just don't think my learning is over. I'm, I'm 53 and there's still so much to learn. And um, I don't know, I just like the, the journey. I, I really believe in life, not just like in a profession, it's about passion. If you're passionate about what you do, you never go to work because you love what you do. And that makes our job easy in a way. And people said, like they tell me, uh, my family in Austria said, Wolfgang, why you don't retire? Why are you opening a restaurant? I said, that's what I love to do. I much rather open a restaurant than watch TV. Uh, a TV show at home, you know? So to me, that's my life. And I always say, you know what? If I die once, hopefully, maybe it's in the kitchen when the service is over, you know, but that everybody got fed and then they can carry me out. But it is really true. I could not find anything else I would much rather do, you know? I think uh, uh, if you're passionate about what you do, and also I think the thing is, when you're independent, if you work for a big company, you have to follow the rules. They have meetings for nothing. Yeah. We go in the kitchen and just change one dish. I said, okay, I'm going to change it. I'm going to take it off the menu. I'm going to add that to the menu. Makes life easy. So I think often people can be, we got many offers actually to sell for a lot of money. But then I said, I would have a lot of money and I would have to tell somebody, well, or somebody will tell me, Wolfgang, the food cost is too high or the labor cost is too high. You know, it's in the big companies, it's always about the bottom line. We don't work for the bottom line. We work because we have passion and we love what we do. Yeah. Yep, it's true. So you just love it. <laughs> well, great. You've, you're both 
wonderful to listen to. And uh, if you want to keep uh, visiting with each other, go right ahead. But but uh, I just miss seeing you, Wolfgang. I'd love to be able to see you sometime. I miss All you. All right. Well, we have to do something one of these days. Yeah. yeah. No, and something. thank you. So I want to just make sure you know how much I thank you so much for all the years you taught me and I got to actually work you know in those old days I got to work with Wolfgang you know yeah. there's probably uh, a lot of people who didn't uh, get to actually work with him but I uh, was lucky yeah I'm so proud of you what you have achieved and what you did in your adopted new city I knew that your hard work and your passion will pay off so I never doubted that and I think I have to congratulate you and you know, in the old time for a woman, it was even harder, you know, to get the money, to get a partnership going and everything. I think so. I, I'm very, very happy. And hopefully one of these days I come to Denver and we can hang out. Yes. And thank you again, though. I really just, yeah. maybe they don't thank you enough, but I thank you. <laughs> and you look, you look amazing. So I can see you are happy in business and happy to have a husband. So it's perfect. Be sure to check out more independent restaurant news content at restaurant-hospitality.com.